Yo, yo, it's, Nar it's Naruto time, baby. Yo, what up, guys? It's your boy, son, TJ. Hope you guys are having a nice day. Um, before ever the video starts and everything like that, please hit that like button and comment. It helps the algorithm. And if you're into Dragon Ball Super, check out my previous video talking about who I think is going to be Moro. That video didn't get any views, and I don't know what happened with that. So just want to let that, let that there. Now... This is the top 20 best Naruto Shippuden fights. Now, how I'm going to rank this is personal bias, pretty much. Um, it's based on the impact of the fight and the um, animation quality. Um, I know there's some fights that are very popular as the best animated fights, but we're not going to be, um, this is not going to be only based on just pure animation. Um, this is also including mostly canon fights, which includes Naruto Shippuden and Naruto The Last. We're not talking about Boruto just yet. I'm going to be doing a top, uh, top 10 best Naruto franchise fight so far, which is going to include Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, Naruto The Last, and Naruto, uh, to Boruto, uh, which is, you know, the, you know, the Boruto anime and everything. Thing like that so yeah let's get this started man so for honorable mentions um shikamaru versus hidon um it, it deserves a lot of mention because the impact for the character of shikamaru um and it's just it's a pretty good fight it's just not the most traditional fight but i think it definitely deserves um honorable mention just for the tactics and how smart and uh, powerful villain like hidon um next up is kakashi versus um pain um the fake out death of kakashi versus pain uh, I think it was a really powerful fight, man. Just seeing, like, you think another sensei has died for, like, you know, Naruto and the cause. And just a very impactful fight. But, um, yeah, I, I th it's pretty close from the top 20, but it's ju it just missed it a little bit. And the one that I was debating the most, because I really enjoyed the fight in the manga, was Hashirama versus Madara. Um, again, very iconic fight, but, man, they really didn't do much with it in the anime. Outside of, like, OVAs or filler it's not really too much of a fight that deserves to be in the top 20 just based off pure action and dynamic. Like, again, I love the manga. I love these two characters, but I don't think it deserves to be in the top 20. So, for um, the number 20 is Sakura and Chiyo versus Sasori. I hope that we've all moved past, you know, blindly hating Sakura. <laughs> like, I hope we've moved past that. I think this fight is amazing. Uh, Sasori was a great villain. Um, his different levels of, like... He's just such a big threat because the fact that he was just a pure ninja villain, man. Um, this man had, like, poison, and Sakura was the perfect counter to him. Like, yes, you could say that Sasori let them win, but the combination of Chiyo and Sakura and the fact when the fight gets so big that Sasori stops using the, the third Kazakage and he starts using all his puppets great fight man like the action was incredible soccer was like doing her thing this is probably the best fight she's had all the way up to boruto where she fights the fake uchiha but yeah great fight deserves to be in the top 20 in my personal opinion um next up is obito versus the blood bis um uh ambu i would definitely try to watch this fight uncensored uh, if you watch it censored it's nothing but obito beating up like ambu but they're like it's like black like it's like black blood everywhere um, this is a very brutal fight. Uh, just seeing how Obito unlocked his Mongekyo Sharingan, seeing the pain, how he felt, of how Ren died. It's a very big fight. No matter how much you feel about, like, you know, Obito's character, because I know a lot of people have some problems with Obito. Some people really love him. Some people dislike him. I, sometimes I'm in an indifferent area. Sometimes I like where he went. But very, very brutal and over-the-top fight. And the animation was incredible. Next up is Four Tails Naruto versus Orochimaru. Um, just seeing the Four Tails for the first time, because we always wonder, like, how would Naruto look if he unlocked, like, you know, one, two, three, four? We already saw it in, like, One Tail in part one. And if you haven't seen my part one uh, top 10 best Naruto fights, definitely check it out. But yeah, man, we get to see what Orochimaru could do, where he was at right now. He was able to use some of his arms. And just seeing the first time, um, seeing a Biju Dama. It's an incredible fight, man. It, may, it actually, like, made Naruto look way more powerful as a verse in this fight, man. It was incredible stuff. I think it definitely deserves this spot. Next up is Sas Sasuke versus Deidara. Very, very dynamic fight. And seeing Sasuke, especially heavy, heavy Sasuke, do a lot of tactical abilities. Like, this is, like, the peak of, like, Sasuke in that whole um, curse mark slash his tactical abilities using Chidori Nagashi. And seeing Deidara and seeing what he can do against uh, Uchiha. 
Um, very credible stuff. Seeing Dater pull out his big trump card, uh, trump card C4. Yeah, man, great stuff. Great seeing Sasuke at his full, like a big potential with the curse mark. Very, very powerful fight. I'll definitely say check it out. It's hard to fully describe in this in this video. Um, next up is Killer B versus Sasuke. Now, the clash, the, the sword clash in this fight is always legendary. I remember seeing the AMV of that fight so many times where Sasuke is clashing with Killer B and he's getting sliced up. And um, even though it's more of like a one-sided beatdown, but Sasuke still held his own. And Killer B fought Sasuke and Nataka, and he was taking them all on by himself. And the man was representing, man. A powerful black man. Granted, he fell into like another you know, black stereotype and wanted to be a rapper. <laughs> But yeah, man, he he did his thing. Sasuke did his thing, and even though it ended on more of an like anticlimactic thing, because it looked like Sasuke won with Amaterasu, and that was the first time seeing him use it, um, Killer B still won majority of the fight, and he snuck out of that Amaterasu in the end. So great fight, deserves his spot. Next up is Naruto and Sasuke. Oh, actually, my bad, my bad. <laughs> um, next up is Sasuke versus the Five Kage Summit. Uh, this is Sasuke just being a complete badass. Him fighting the Raikage, Gara, Onoki, Mei Toriyomi, I think that's how you say her name. Just fighting all of them, just jumping in, don't care. It's a dumb decision because, you know, he hasn't really fully mastered his Mangekyo. And he's learning how to use Susanoo throughout the entire fight. But, yeah, man, the animation... Seeing how Sasuke was willing to just go all out, no bards, I'm fighting all the Kages, run up, catch this fade... Deserves respect, and I de definitely deserves his spot, even though he's saved by Toby slash Obito near the end. I think it's a great fight, man. He took on everybody, and it deserves a spot. But next up, like I was saying, is Naruto Sasuke versus Rikudo Madara. Um, I enjoyed this fight more in the manga, but in the anime, um, the animation was kind of like standard. Uh, Madara is a great villain. Um, I like his Rikudo form. I like seeing Naruto Sasuke come back and dominate. But the animation quality wasn't the greatest. But I think the impact still really matters. Because this is Madara's final showing. But it gets knocked down a few rankings. Because it ends with like you know. Black Zetsu taking over his body to summon Kage. And I know a lot of people are still mad at that. I don't, you know. It's, I thought it was a good twist. But it is not going to make it a, a, you know higher on this list. Next up is Naruto and Sa I mean, God, I keep saying Naruto and Sasuke by accident. Next up is Team 7 versus Kaguya. Um, this fight is higher. Just, and it's not because Kaguya is a better villain than Madara. It's just the animation and overall scale of the fight was way bigger than Madara. Um, the lava world, the ice world, the acid world, the sand world. Um, all of it was just so pretty and cool. Uh, seeing Naruto and Sasuke using more of their abilities against Kage that he didn't use against Madara was um, really cool. Seeing them working together, seeing that um, Obito sacrificed himself to save Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi. Kakashi uses the double Mangekyo and uses Rikudo and all this stuff. Even though it low-key doesn't make sense after a point, <laughs> I thought it was really cool. Seeing it finish off with Sakura, Naruto, and Sasuke um, able to seal Kage away. Um, even though Sakura wasn't able to affect the fight as much as she wanted to, she was still able to help Obito, help Sasuke. Yeah, it's a great fight, a great f uh, finale to Naruto, but not the best fight in Naruto Shippuden, in my personal opinion. Next up is Naruto and Killer B versus Tobi. Um, so just seeing Naruto in his Biju, um, actually in his uh, Chakra mode, and uh, Killer B working together to take on all the um, Ido Tensei Jinchuriki, and them fighting against Obito's hacks, or Tobi's hacks, on using his Mangekyo and Renegon abilities, and when Naruto finally unlocks Biju mode, and he's able to just knock off all the Biju by himself, and use the Biju Dama to pretty much take on majority of the Jinchuriki, I think it was great. Um, it's seeing the uh, the comparisons of Naruto with Minato. Um, it's not as like a very powerful like like fight as against Kaguya, but I think he just deserves a, a higher spot because of the dynamic and just seeing the Jinchuriki and especially a lot of Felix Jinchuriki do their thing and just seeing the new say, like six pa um, six pass of pain. Yeah, I think he deserves this spot. Next up, I have Eighth Gate Guy versus Rakuto Madara. Um, this would be higher if majority of the fight wasn't just standard to bad animation than when um, Eighth Guy uses like Night, I think it was like Night Dragon or Night Gates or I forgot his final attack where he pretty much summons a dragon um, in his kick. Um, yeah, man, that, that final animation sequence really saves this fight for me. 
um, and just the impact of this fight is that we've been hyped to figure out what would the eighth gate look like throughout the entire Naruto franchise and I think they pretty much delivered even though he should have died uh, but my favorite character Naruto came in and saved the day I think it deserves his spot, his spot just a big how big the impact the fight really was uh, next up is Minato versus the masked man and Kurama. Minato is like my top five favorite character in the Naruto franchise with Naruto and Sasuke being um, first and second. And Minato really showed himself in this fight, proving himself as the yellow flash. Um, trying to try, he literally saved um, his son while in the worst predicament and with his wife being a Jinchuriki and Obito taking advantage of the entire situation and somehow some way Minato outsmarted the entire situation was able to take on Kurama and um, the freaking Obito with his Senju DNA and his, and his hacks abilities and he was still able to win and take on Kurama and seal, uh, seal him into Naruto it was a great fight. Beautiful seeing um, his space-time jutsu in action. Just seeing the legend do his thing deserves deserves the number 10 spot. Next up is Naruto versus Torneri. Great animated fight, man. Um, Naruto the Last had a lot of great fights in there. Seeing Naruto like really come to his own, not using any real shadow clones, using Razen Shurikens through his own will without using like a Biju mode or his um his six pass sage mode, or you know, I, I call it recoil sage mode sometimes, but that's just like a, a weird thing for me. But um yeah, this fight would be higher, but it's not it's a great animated fight, but it's more of a Dragon Ball fight. And when Naruto Shippuden, it had a great balance of doing like Dragon Ball Shonen type stuff while also maintaining that Naruto flair. And this fight went a little bit too far into the Dragon Ball door um door uh Dormain. and then again i'm a big dragon ball fan but i like naruto to have his own thing and this fight was really well animated great stuff but a little bit too dragon ball for me to be higher next up is sasuke versus donzo uh yeah man this was incredible like i said in my naruto my best naruto part one fights is that when sasuke's on the screen they bring up the animation budget baby and this was incredible we all wanted donzo to get his comeuppance and the animation was incredible for majority of this fight man seeing the tactics seeing um sasuke so enraged trying to revenge itachi and seeing donzo just spam the hell out of izanagi incredible fight man with a fantastic finish off and just seeing how much uh, how far Sasuke's fallen at that point as being pretty much the main antagonist or the future antagonist coming up later on in the series. Yeah, great fight, great animation. Love seeing Susano, especially that that Marcus Susano when he had the bow. Loved that fight. Next up is Kakashi versus Obito. Now, I know this is going to get a lot of dislikes because I've, I've seen this fight being the best fight in Naruto history so many times. Um... The impact of this fight is kind of iffy because Obito was holding back and purposely wanted to lose. So he'd become like, you know, the, um, the Jujubi Jinchuriki. But the anime really bumped this fight up a lot because this fight wasn't that special in the manga. Actually, it was like off screen, majority of it. And um, Kakashi really shouldn't have stood a chance. But man, what they did in the anime, the flashbacks, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, just a pure Naruto fight. It kind of brings you back to like Naruto Part 1, Naruto versus Sasuke or Rock Lee versus Gara. Credible fight. I just think the only thing that holds it back is just um, the story, like the storytelling for it and just the overall impact for it is not as incredible as the animation they gave it, man. I wish it had this animation for Naruto versus Pain, but we'll get to that later. Um, next up is Naruto versus Kurama. The impact of this fight, the way the manga did it and the way the anime did it, was incredible you get to see where naruto has been training his sage mode how powerful he really was to take on the i think the yang side of kurama and pretty much damn near dominated to the point that kurama had to use sneaky tactics and use naruto's own insecurities against him and then you see kushina come in and save naruto with her chakra change and just seeing like where naruto is at and just we've been waiting for naruto to be able to control his inner demon which is the kurama mode for the entire Higher Naruto, and seeing him actually on his own two feet, using his own powers, not relying on the QB's chakra to win, was way more powerful for me than uh, Kakashi versus Obito. You can disagree with me, but I think just seeing uh, Naruto's full potential using his own abilities, um, and just it just was something that we was looking forward to for so long. The animation was pretty great. Uh, I think it deserves to be deserves a spot. 
Um, next up is Madara versus the Shinobi, Li uh, Shinobi Alliance slash the Five Kages. I pretty much just joined these fights together because one, that animation sequence when, when Madara shows up as the Edo Tensei takes on all the freaking like, um, all the, um, all the, all the father, uh, Shinobi Alliance people was incredible. We've seen that in almost every Naruto AMV on the planet. <laughs> um, just seeing how he pretty much dominates and just takes on the entire five Kage, which is Tsunade, Onoki, Gara, Raikage, Mei, Toyumi. He takes them all on and just shows the difference between all of them. And it just really showed how much of a badass model really was. And um, yeah, man, I really loved it. All the little like the sneaks of just like how he does the double meteor. He has Mokuton or Wood style. Um, he has the Renegon. He turned him on Gekyo. It just really, just really, it just cemented how much of a powerful villain Madara was. How much of a fan favorite he was going to be later on. Um, next up is Jiraiya versus Pain. Jiraiya is in my top five favorite characters along with Naruto, Sasuke, Minato, and you know, there's Jiraiya, and then maybe Hashirama, don't know, maybe Madara, it's hard to figure out, but um, yeah, man, this is, was Jiraiya's final out, man, um, I don't care what's going on in Boruto, don't care, this was Jiraiya's final out, and um, it was a, it was a great fight, man, like, if Jiraiya had more knowledge of who Pain was, it's even been said by Nagato that he would have won, but the fact of the matter is, this is the first time we see Sage Mode. We see him working with the with his Toads, and uh, we just see him be a complete badass at his full potential. And um, man, uh, in the way it ends, you're not really expecting it because you think he's won the battle. In reality, he he lost the war, man, and it was sad. But man, shout out to my boy Jiraiya. You'll always be remembered. One of the saddest deaths in, Na in Naruto history. Um, it's not higher because I feel like some fights are, was waited more a little bit longer than this fight and was a little bit more impactful. It's hard to say it, but it is what it is, man. And next up is Sasuke versus Itachi. I was going back and forth on whether I wanted Sasuke and Itachi under or above Jiraiya, but I have it above because literally when Sasuke was first introduced, this fight was something that hyped up from day one. The animation was incredible. The first time we got to see Susano. Um, even though Itachi wasn't at full power, he was holding back. It looked incredible. Um, Sasuke doing his thing. And Kirin was the first time we saw it. And that's one of my favorite Sasuke moves of all time. Even Orochimaru comes in to get sealed. Granted, Orochimaru just doesn't know how to die. So this isn't the last time we see him. But seeing Itachi go from villain number one to being the old, one of the most ultimate um, twists. That he was really a hero that was forced to, to kill his clan for the greater good. Just a great twist, uh, something that's been looked forward to in Naruto history since the jump. And um, yeah, I mean, it was foreshadowed, and I think it lived up to all the hype, and it led it up to uh, Sasuke unlocking his Mangekyo. Um, next up is a hard one for me, because um, it's a mixed bag, but I would say Sage Mode Naruto versus the Six Paths of Pain. Um, reason for that is because this fight really got me into Naruto. I'm not going to lie for the longest time when I was a little kid. I always felt a little, little passive aggressive towards Naruto because I felt like it was just a copy of Dragon Ball because I was just an ignorant fan. But then when I saw this fight, it made me a Naruto fan. I backtracked to look at everything else like, man, Naruto is awesome. But the problem is that when I look back at this fight, the animation is very inconsistent. The impact is there. This is what made me a Naruto fan. And this is what made me a Naruto Uzumaki fan because he's still on his own two feet. He did it like he didn't rely on Kurama. Um, he was the hero. He was the main guy. There was no Kakashi. There was no anyone holding him back. He was that nigga at that moment. But the problem is that they really use standard animation for a big parts of these fights. And I've grown to understand the dynamic animation they use when um, Hinata comes in and she almost gets killed and he unlocks the, the six tails form. I don't think it's bad animation. It's just very loose animation. Then when he goes back to his normal self after Minato uh, reseals the seal, it goes right back to standard animation. Um... I would say animation wise, it'll probably be in the lower like six, but I would say the impact is, is so incredible and makes it top two for me. Um, Pain was like honestly probably my favorite villain in, in Naruto history, along with Sasuke and, uh, and Madara and Orochimaru. Like, the dude was just so menacing. The man took out like literally one of my favorite characters and he had a cool voice, a cool design. And Naruto was actually able to stand on his own two feet and pretty much win. Um, even though Kurama came in and did some stuff though, but he was able to stay on his own two feet and be the hero of the franchise and continued to get better throughout the franchise and earn his spot. 
and I think it earns it, man. Like, the way he comes in when the camera turns around, when he has his arm crossed, legendary stuff, man. Naruto Sage Mode and that design will always be remembered. And it's just a great fight. I think it deserves number two, despite the animation being kind of standard and being very creative near the end parts. And next up is number one. Um, not counting all the filler Naruto vs. Sasuke's and the OVA's, even though I really love that one OVA where Naruto has Asuma's, like, weapon or something. The final fight for Naruto vs. Sasuke in the Valley of the End, the, the last fight they ever do when they pretty much lose their arms, um, it lived up to everything that I ever wanted, man. Like, for the longest time, if you play Naruto Storm, all their fights, like, pretty much was better than the animes, man. Like, even, like, the like, like the last fight, the Naruto vs. Pain fight was better in Storm 2 than it was in the anime for a lot of that fight. But this completely crapped on all over Naruto Storm 4's Naruto vs. Sasuke fight. Um, the filler added into the fight scenes was incredible. Um... Yeah, it was not short at all. The animation was consistent. It was damn near like a movie. Um, it, what can I say, man? The Dragon Ball type stuff was incredible with like, you know, the Kurama Avatar versus the Susano with uh, with, with the um, the Biju Exorb. Um, we've been looking forward to this fight ever since the end of part one. Um, seeing Sasuke and Naruto's different abilities, even though Sasuke had the edge in terms of he had all the Biju and Naruto didn't want to fight back, it still made the fight incredibly well. Even though I think Naruto was way more strong than Sasuke in this fight, he was still able to win despite Sasuke using all the tactics on the planet. Um, it went from like it had the perfect balance of being an overtop shonen fight while also still being a Naruto fight where after they use all their abilities it's still a slugfest that it ends with the Rasengan versus uh, Sasuke's uh, Chidori and it ends with Naruto able to convince Sasuke to just change and be and, and like be the old Sasuke we knew in part one where he wasn't so obsessed with revenge and trying to become now the next Hokage <laughs> in that fight so yeah, man, um, definitely the best fight and probably the best fight in Naruto history. We'll get into that when I start talking about the top 10 best Naruto franchise fights. Unless y'all want to be a top 20 again. Um, so, yeah, guys, tell me what you guys think. What is your top 20 best Naruto Shippuden fights, um, including um, Naruto The Last? And if you want to include movies, again, not the biggest fan of movies like that. Um, yeah, man, check out my previous videos. The views have been kind of low, man. Thank you guys for all the support, man. We're getting close to 20k uh, thousand subscribers. Really appreciate the love, man. Big Naruto fan. You already know how I feel about Boruto. So, yeah, Sun to Job. Peace. Love you all.